You're listening to the Eldest Jiry Channel. <laughs> A Hung Jury at Brimstone by Dave Stancliffe Performed by Otis Jiry Badlands Billy stoically waited to be hung. He was wanted for stealing souls in Brimstone and was captured in a saloon there by two zombie bounty hunters. Not without a fight, however. One of the zombies lost his hand when Badlands Billy hacked it off with his hatchet during the melee, saloon patrons tried to stay out of the fracas, but there were still some injuries from errant bullets buzzing around like mad bees in an increasingly smoky saloon. When it was over, the two zombies had Billy hogtied and drug him to the sheriff's office where he was thrown into jail. The sheriff, a second-level demon, paid the zombies their bounty, then unceremoniously kicked them out of his office. Next time you take a bath, you smelly bastards, Sheriff Bodie shouted. You've stunk up my jail again. He turned to Billy and looked him over critically. You don't look stupid, he mused out loud. But anyone who thinks he can get over on the master has to be an idiot, he firmly declared. Don't tell me you haven't thought about it, lawman. I have. But the difference between you and me is I'm smart enough not to. That really pisses Lucifer off, you know. Why don't you let me go, Sheriff? You know my gang is going to show up soon, and there will be hell to pay. Another level here or there doesn't particularly bother me, Billy. A day later, while the sheriff waited for the judge from Tombstone to arrive, Billy's gang rode into Brimstone on black horses. They trotted up to the jailhouse and got off their silent steeds without exchanging words. All five of them were pulling out their pistols when the town's inhabitants opened fire. They were expected. Bullets rained down from porches, Every window and door had a shooter busily firing at the gang. Like Billy, they were all level one demons and were dropping like fetid flies. When the firing stopped, they lay scattered on the dusty street in front of the jailhouse. Their riddled bodies seeped blood that trickled down into the dirt in little pools. Level one ghouls bit on the bodies afterwards. Their flesh sold for far more than beef. It was one of the many reasons why Brimstone didn't have a coroner. When Billy learned of his gang's fate, he howled like a wolf all night. I guess that's it for you, wise guy, the sheriff later mocked him. I expect a judge tomorrow, so you better be ready to be served up on someone's plate when the death penalty's handed down. What? No jury, no trial. I thought even level one demons had some rights. Well, there'll be a jury and you'll get a trial, but at the end of the day, the devil always wins. The trial was held at the saloon. The judge arrived with two officers of the county court who immediately set up rows of chairs and constructed a crude platform where the judge would sit on an old stuffed chair from one of the upstairs whore's room. When the sheriff escorted Billy into the saloon, cheers broke out. Apparently Billy did have some supporters in the crowd. The jury consisted of level one demons that weren't too drunk to sit upright for an hour, Billy's peers. The judge slammed his gavel on a little desk in front of him and called for silence. He looked down at Billy with undisguised disgust. Even a stupid soul-stealer like Billy knew that wasn't a good sign. You stand accused of stealing souls from humans who are the master's playthings. By poaching on Lord Satan's subjects, you've crossed the line of no return. Your fate now lies with his jury. 
the judge said, indicating a group of twelve demons sitting unsteadily in two rows of rickety chairs. How do you plead? I'm as innocent as a newborn babe, Your Honor. Rolling his eyes in scorn, the judge called on the first witness. A parade of previously paid witnesses spent the next hour testifying against Billy. The judge bravely tried to stay awake during their testimony, but occasionally one of them would slip off in his chair, only to waken startled and blurry-eyed before regaining his seat. It's time for the defense to state their case, the judge declared. Billy's lawyer slowly stood up. His rumbled jacket had vomit stains in the front. Bloodshot eyes searched the room before settling on Billy. Are you my client? He asked Billy after letting out a long belch. Yeah, Billy admitted in resignation. The lawyer, Travis Goldblatt turned to the judge and bowed. If it pleases the court, my client begs for mercy and a lower level of hell. He didn't mean to do it. The judge dismissed him with a wave of his long skeletal fingers and turned to the jury. All right, you lazy bastards. You go over to that room behind the bar. Make a decision on what we should do with this piece of scum. The decision only took ten minutes. When the jury assembled before the judge, ten of them looked pale with fright. The eleventh jury member appeared to be unconcerned. He was casually chewing on a wad of tobacco and talking with the twelfth juror when the judge asked for their decision. The forlorn speaker for the jury stood up and mumbled a reply. Speak up, damn you, the judge groused. We have a hung jury, your lordship, he admitted. The saloon broke out in roars of laughter. This never happened before. The accused in any trial was always declared guilty. That was part of being damned. The situation was so unique that the judge sat there in shock during the chaos. One of Billy's supporters in the crowd shouted, Free drinks on me! Causing a stampede to the bar. The judge and the two county officers seemed to shrink in stature as they slithered past the revelers and out the bat-wing doors. As it stands, even the devil's minions get out of line sometimes. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to this story in its entirety. If you enjoy what you hear and what I do and would like to support me and my efforts, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash Otis Jiry. If you haven't yet, please hit the like button and subscribe today and share this video with everyone on your social media. It helps more than you could ever imagine. Again, thank you for listening and have a great day. God bless you.